Welcome back to VCT Americas, where Super Week is delivering in every sense of the word as EG laid the smackdown to Furia on map number two, Fracture, and they push us the distance. Dude, they're doing it. They're yeah, actually doing they're, this is, They are doing it. This is the best I've seen EG look. Like yeah. this is, It's time to get serious. The EG actually looks phenomenal ever since Demon 1 came into this team, and I don't know how this happened. I feel like I was too early of an investor in EG. Now it's finally starting to take form. This team is finally starting to put the pieces together, and they absolutely dismantle Furia on Fracture, which I did not think would happen whatsoever. Sure, Fury hasn't played the map in a while, but EG has shown a lot, and they went back to some of those same ideas, but executed them so well. So well. I feel like Fury really, really struggled to find openings throughout this entire game. They were always on the back foot. I felt like EG delivered a lot of aggression on their defensive side for complimenting, you know, the Brazilian teams for being so aggressive. I think they were the more aggressive ones in this matchup. They were on that defensive side in particular. It was fantastic. But what EG showed, I think, was not only that they have these gimmicks and the one-offs that work really well and are well prepared, but they also seemed a lot better at kind of implementing them in the mid round and coming up with ideas on the fly. This was one such example. You get pressured from main and be instant reaction. Breach out through. Jaw is double satcheling from the other side. And it initially goes wrong, but still, the team manages to keep their cool, have a couple individual moments with ping pong from the other side of comp to be able to win this one on out. And on top of that, the implementation of the Sova continued to be really good. The darts were finding value. The ults were great. Like, EG is finally hitting. The blind ult Com had on DG that one round where the drone saw him behind the box in A main was just gorgeous. He had so many plays with his ult and his kit throughout this game, and it's twice now in a row I've seen this Sova on Fracture have tons of impact. So it's so weird to not see it anywhere else in the scene when Com is making it work so well. We prided Furia on their innovation, on coming up with new ideas at times, but it was really EG who was showing me more of that. Furia went back to this neon composition, something that is really old, and they were running a lot of the same things. We try and go for the optic hit. Oh, Killjoy Utilis there. There's a Sova Shock Dart coming in. They go for these defensive aggression moments. That doesn't work out. And on top of that, like they were trying to hop on the neon. It was such a weird read. Yeah, the neon itself was a little bit of a fringe pick, right? Well, they've played it before in the past, so it wasn't necessarily a surprise out of Furia specifically doesn't really seem to fit at least the style of game right now. And then you compare that in the duelist-to-duelist -duelist matchup against Jaguar, and it was they're not even close. Yeah, and this is where I think, you know, the lack of the, the rays on Fury right now might have hurt them a little bit because the Neon, like you guys said, just didn't get any value. DG was just running all over the map trying to get off openings, and the Sopa Breach and Killjoy Util were shutting him down everywhere this game. It was. Jaw was uh, he's just a that boy jaw moment. When he plays on this race, it's his role. It hits for him. But yeah, on the other side, I think a lot of the issues were cropping up. In map number one, DG, despite the rough first half, provided so much for this team in the comeback, in being proactive, in getting those opening fights. He wasn't able to provide the same value to Furia in this one. And on top of that, playing up against this composition that was a little bit weirder, that was a little bit off of probably what they've practiced against a lot of other teams, it felt like they struggled to adapt. There were so many moments where the dart wasn't broken, where the Neon was kind of left out to dry without enough utility to support him. I mean, that's the thing, right? He's missing that first stop shot. If you're playing Jet, not an issue. If you've got the up draft, you know, dash maybe to get out of a sticky situation, but you're not afforded that kind of safety on Neon, and I feel like EG punished it incredibly well when they identified that he had missed that first take. So much of what makes a Neon good on this map, on defense in particular, is what you get with fast rotations, with defensive-sided aggression. Putting an op on that role means you're kind of freezing up your Neon player. And another thing EG did good, you mentioned earlier the ping-ponging from top side. So when they would pinch through through the halls, the A halls, there would always be people coming out of dish, and DJ just had nowhere to fall to. He was stuck, so even though he's the fastest player in the server, there's nowhere to run to when someone's you know, on one side and someone else Just is running, running into open arms exactly. <laughs> of your opponents. That issue also goes back to the fact that the Neon was pinned down, so they were rarely going for north or south side crunches. They weren't really taking that space, which is yes. tends to be very pivotal on Fracture. Also, when they were going for retakes, I didn't see them flanking super often and pushing through the extremities, which is also something that's really powerful with the Neon. It felt like they didn't play to the strengths. They were slow. They felt slow throughout the entire map, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Which is wild to say about a team like Furia, right? A Brazilian tipping, team yeah, tipping, running neon. <laughs> yeah, you even heard Potter say it in her uh, little interview before the series, right? That they expect aggression and they expect creativity and unpredictability out of this team. And it feels like, yeah, the pace has been switched up a little bit. Shoes on the other foot. A player whose praises we are singing a lot of in map number one, haven't yet mentioned here in map number two, but still popped off in a big way, is Evil Genius's Abustio. Let's hear from him now, who spoke with us about the different play styles of NA and Brazilian teams. Uh, the Brazilian teams play like really uh, like grouped up, not as slow as NA teams. They have uh, yeah, a lot of fi- firepower usually in their duels players too. And um, it's gonna be interesting. They uh, their hits are really good, and it's a lot different than NA. So it just takes time to um, in practice. You just have to practice against that. Oh hey, would you look at that? They group up and they <laughs> don't play as slow as the NA teams, but kind of called on that right away by EG. Yeah, and I think we saw it in that one as well, where sure they were grouping up, sure they were going for a lot of these hits on the attacking side, but it was actually Bustio, the guy shutting it down his killjoy utility again provided so much value he's having the best series that i think i've ever seen from him since chamber dropped out of the meta he he full mollied a neon on a b exec you don't see that he full mollied and then the one time dg was opping under pass we had lockdown he actually aggressively alarm botted the corner which made dg have to fall off it just had so much impact with his kit on a neon which is crazy uh, let's talk about map three. I think a lot of people weren't necessarily certain we'd even make it all the way to Haven, but that is where we will go for our decider. Last time we were lucky enough to see Furia on this map. It was at lock in in that quadruple overtime, if I remember correctly, Something against like Fnatic. It went deep into that one. Uh, and ultimately they did fall to the eventual winners of lock in, but uh, they showed us what they're capable uh, playing against the world's best on this map. Yeah, this is the map that sold us on Furia that really brought up the stock of this team for so many people that sold the narrative of them being innovators, of trying new things, of having these great ideas. But for EG, we don't really know what their idea is going to be. They ran a pretty default comp, but it was John the Jet. It was before Demon 1 was going yeah. in. So I could see them going and changing everything around ahead of this Haven. Yeah, that's the question is what is EG really going to do here? BCJ was on the Omen before. We haven't seen Demon play Omen. Is he going to play Jet? And if so, does that put Jog on Omen? Did someone play Ash, like, It's a very weird situation right now for EG. Do they go to a raise composition, like play a fade raise breach and put Jaw back on that role? Like, what is the idea with Demon? Because it still feels like even EG is kind of figuring it out. Yeah, they, they don't really have an exact role for Demon yet in this team. They just win with him. Right, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The role is demon go kill, for real. All right, well, we'll find out soon enough. We could theory craft all we want around what these teams are gonna bring to the table. Yeah, a lot of questions to be answered here by Evil Geniuses and how they're gonna slot Demon 1 in. QCK is playing, uh, they're switching off of this double controller composition. They're going back to the kind of more default one of the double initiator jet, and that's also the solution for EG. Slightly different initiator between the Sova and the Sky, but a lot of that does come to personal preference. Yeah, the sky, we don't really see that picked very much lately, actually, compared to the Sova. We've been seeing a lot of Sovas on Haven, so I don't know. EG had run skies, I think, in the past on their Haven comp, and I, I've been very critical of EG's attack half, specifically on Haven, but they have improved drastically over the last couple of weeks. I think their ability to maneuver around the map on their attack half will determine whether they win or lose this game. DG seemed a little too slow, wasn't able to get in on those openers in map number two, but in this one, he has sky dogs to enable him. He has so much util built up for him, but it's the same case for Demon. Yeah, possible that DG could run away with this with better enabling picks behind him and the jet in his own hands. On the other side, though, it will be Giacomo making space for Demon 1 on the duelist to see if they can get it done against Fury. It's time for map three. Let's find out if Evil Geniuses can pull off an upset as we send it back to Doug and Bala. Thank you, Dash. Yeah, that's a question on everyone's mind, right? They get pushed on Ascent in a way that nobody expected. They get destroyed on Fracture in a way that some people may have expected. And that sets the stage for this. One map to decide if EG can take down Fury or not, Ball. And it's the map that Mimi said we all fell in love with Fury. This is the map that they sold us on, this team. But the question mark is put on this because they're not going to that comp that they brought out at lock-in. The first ones to run the Viper Harbor on Haven on the international stage and it's gone they've gone back to default they've gone for a triple flash comp instead one that hasn't been seen since last year et going for the standard and i think as well the question that was posed by the desk is what the role is for demon one 
that question's answered as well. He's definitely going to be playing the full-time duelist while yeah. Giacomo has moved on to full-time controller. That dart is taking its dear sweet time to get down. But it looks like they're going to try to coordinate it as they're pushing through Garage. QCK has to give the space up. It's a full and retake, but look at the space that Fury has taken on the rest of the map, yeah, too. Yeah, man, that's going to be a hot flank. QCK Fight waiting. Planted. Frenzy in hand. Patiently anticipating the swing. There it is. Demon one. Good for it. But it traded right back. Double flank through Garage. Digis in. Oh, Axe gonna catch going, Com. Com. He's trying to reflank Garage. And he's gonna cost his team potentially right now. Ethan is stuck. Flash. Oh, it goes all the way through. There's no way. Oh, but he's not expecting someone to swing out. DG still cleans him up. Furia take the pistol. That's a good recovery from Furia in moments where they've been struggling significantly. They lost that first fight from QCK who fell offside and played the retake. But then they all group up. That flank came in a perfect time in the garage. EG thought they had a lot more space than they did. Credit to EG though. You mentioned that dart taking its sweet time. The higher it comes from, the harder it is for you to actually hear that it's coming down on top of you. And you don't have to be shooting it in the execute. So you can have your gun out. You can have right. the drone coming at the same time, essentially comboing with yourself. So Fury with the pistol. It's been back and forth on the pistols for the most part throughout this series. It has. Trevor. Blinded. Deep flash out from MW and the spam into the main. It seems like we're, that is gonna be where they wanna go. MW finding info does spot com at the top of that. They smoked off the alarm, but Bustio's trying to get in with that space. Yo, I respect it's coming. I respect Bustio's play style so hard, man. Oh, oh, hello? Uh. That was scary for a second there, but QCK comes to the rescue of Mazin, who gets healed back up. It's just three pistols that remain for EG. Great flash. They're all gone. Spike down Just like a. that. This was the style that they were able to yeah. actually pull off against Fnatic with that Harper Viper comp, which is just absolutely crushing together with the spacing. And there's two ideas for me when I look at them go away from that comp. It's okay, number one, you're playing against a very prep heavy team. Potter has been known in the past, anti strat. Yeah, very good point. Like crazy, so pull out something new, something unexpected. Second, they weren't fully confident in that idea. Viper comps on this map have gone wa waxed and waned throughout the meta. It's more of a surprise than anything. So maybe moving away from it, because they already think that the gimmick is gone. Deep flash, heavy aggression, A main, but EG want to test the water C. And they've gotten out onto the site. They should be able to get the spike down too. That's again, it's the same round as pistol. Spike. This one's gonna be a lot harder to execute from though, because look, EG's covering up the mistakes. This time they came through C-Long. There's no garage presence. Nobody can get flanked. Calm is also droning instead of being the one who face checking around that corner. Very good call and starting to see these minor adaptations and mistakes that they previously made short up. Look at QCK though. He's holding the space in spawn. Blinding. So they can't push forward. And DJ is going to dash on that. Very well done. Still getting hit. Still flash. Still blinded. The smoke keeps him out, though. They have to wait for that. And still alive. Oh. It's gotten real hairy for EG. Oh, Jokobo's going to see that time. Short. Oh, oh, no way. Jokobo. It's over. What a round saving play. Clutch. That is insanely risky. Was that a 2v4? 2v4. Giacomo go for the TP up. I'm questioning how they did not hear the TP. How did they not look behind them? But he pulled it off. That rarely works at a pro level. Take a look at the Red Bull clutch one more time. Straight up Houdini type moves, man. Because you're right. This doesn't. This doesn't work. Oh, we're not gonna catch it. He saw the moment. You saw it. He's like, is this going to work? I like grinned. it. Yeah. That's crazy. But economically, actually, EG is hurting after that round. Surprisingly, they've been forced to save. And Fury, I, I think it's a good call given 
they didn't come out with that too many weapons, so they out. lose the loss bonus as well. And you know Fury is going to be investing in an op. You know Fury is still going to be able to get together a really nice buy. Trailblazer did spot two there. Demon one is past it though, and Khalil throwing a little shoulder, waiting to see if anyone challenges. Very diligent. MW holding this deeper, deeper angle as well. Khalil is with him. He could flash out of this smoke too. I'm su I wouldn't be surprised for CA walk through the smoke. Ready. Just like that. Remaining. Uh, I was thinking EG was gonna walk exactly like that. <laughs> And that's unfortunately the wrong call. MW is just holding it. And it's surprising to me to see that they go for that idea and don't like walk together as a line sure. instead of walk one by one in. Well, they tried. I mean, just a step, just a step <laughs> behind. But going into a phantom in a situation like that is just, yeah, that feels bad. And a reminder of what the scoreline was for Fury against that I will be Fnatic roster that careful. one lock it on this map. It was nine to three on the defense. A much different comp though, so not as certain of how much they need on this defensive half, but this is already such a different look than what we saw in Fracture. Look at this setup. They've got Mazine playing back B with the fault line ready to hit garage, which is exactly where they're going. Nice timing. Space off the turret getting spammed a little bit. And all it does is delay EG though. I'm not even really getting a drone out or anything like that. DG's dash was procced. And eventually just kind of falls by the wayside. The problem with this is EG hasn't really taken a ton of space. So now they're gonna have to use the, these bits of utility, the drone, for example, to just clear a main instead of getting out onto the site. And you've got a Seekers that you're facing from Furia. And Bustio faces early there, so you can show that it's just the Killjoy, and then he breaks all of the Seekers too. So they're not fully sure what those Seekers gave them for info, but now this should be. 30 seconds left. Just a little shoulder scene. He's alone. And he's flashed. MW trying to survive. Nice Does start. for now. Khalil backside is also going to be dealt with. MW still hasn't been cleared. He gets two. Khalil from backside gets another, but that's all it is. Ethan equalizes. Yeah. Now a 2v2, Bustio weak. 10, 10 seconds, seconds left. left. Time short. Ult ready. That ult should buy remaining. a lot of it. Perfect timing on the swing from Bustio off of that ult. Gun's not retrievable either. Is TG gonna go for this? I mean, they're weak. He's got a shot at it, but that's brutal. Ethan with three, EG with two. Ethan is... A force to be reckoned with in this game. For a spin. He is playing so well overall in this series. And he's able to recover this when it's chaotic too. Khalil was alive, MW was alive. That's the battle of those two, I feel like, so far in this game. Couple of Omen ults on the board for us this round. The blades for Demon 1 as well, and you imagine. Get out of my way. There it is. Right on cue. Remember here, the last time they did the last time they did this, there was a fault line that was set up from Mazine, and it's it's set up to hit again. So but Demon the, 1 can't easily pop out of this. There's nobody really to follow up on that fault line though, and they've actually smoked it off as a one-way. So they did just pop and re-clear. Oh, just a pixel. Digison's having so much trouble getting active on all of these maps. Sometimes, like you saw on Ascent, it ends up being an unforced errors. Other times, he's just completely neutered, like on Fracture. You can see it for Demon One here, man. He wants it. Yeah, truly a tantalizing temptation. He wants to go. He's got the blades, he's got the tools. He's just waiting for that, that green light. Ethan has full util too. I thought for a second they may be waiting for fault line or something like that, but there it is. To see if Demon 1 can combine with Giacomo to break up the angles with that Omen ult that you mentioned left. at the beginning of the round. 
Kama's dart too. Cover going up. Khalil's giving some of his face back. They've lost garage. There's that ult. He's gonna okay. That was very close. Either way, they still haven't fully gotten out onto the site. Com getting the opener. 13 seconds left. They burn the clock down as Demon One gets up high and gets a second. Oh, Demon One with the third! Living up to his name in a massive way. That is nasty. A double updraft in the middle of pure chaos, too. You can see the fury of players in the back of sight not expecting that at all whatsoever. You get why he was chomping at the bit as long as he was outside a garage. His knives are insane. And this is exactly why you see him being brought in the roster. This guy was found through open tryouts. That's what EG wanted us to know so much about why he's brought in. They did make a point to highlight open tryouts in the tweet. You're right. <laughs> open tryouts find... <laughs> I'm not quite sure what they were saying, actually, but I think that's what they were saying. This is, I mean, the horns on this guy. And even to have the wherewithal to turn the flash that he sees for just a half second. That is insane. Yeah, You're bro. right. Getting the second updraft. <laughs> Who's she talking to? <laughs> I, know, I wish I could read her lips, bro. Potter Cam always delivers, though. There was no timeout call or anything by the way, so like she's talking to herself and the, coach, the rest of the coaching staff. Fighting her demons. <laughs> you see this fault line set up from Azine. As soon as there's contact, you drop the fault line and you got the swing out from MW. But it does not come through yet. Oh, I thought he was going to get a second, man. Reposition out. He's under it. He's under the drone. Not able to land the kill onto Demon One as he continues to dominate. Remaining. MW's put under so much pressure here. Over and over and over. And Digi's Inch is nowhere to be found. Once again, the wrong site chosen. And it's frustrating for him. The guy just wants to play the game. Man. He definitely does. Map after map now. We're questioning the performance from this. The emotional leader, I think, of Furia. And the fact that he's not getting as much value as you, you've you seen in the past, right. you've seen in prior rounds. How does that affect the rest of the team? Op now spotted, and because of how, how long or how early into the round DG decided he had to save, now he's feeling all this pressure. They're trying to get the op out of his hands, but DG is... Oh. What? <laughs> what on earth what just you saying? took place, bro? <laughs> uh, how costly is that? Okay, not... Uh, I mean, they should have plenty of money, EG, to be okay. Yeah, no, they've got calm on 8.4k, so... Yeah. It's not the biggest of deals. That's why you're comfortable to go for that in the first place. Oh, you're also comfortable to go for it because of the numbers that you have, right? Yeah, you think you can find them. Surely. Somebody, least, well, somebody will get them, right? At least one of us? Still massaging his temples, though. I mean, beastly moments, but again, you, you can sense that he's still frustrated with the fact that he's not being able to be put in the positions. And I think Mimi was talking about how he has the tools on this comp. He has three flashes to get set up to play aggressively and you wonder if again that reliance on the op is hurting him significantly in this case you know it's it, in, you're just interesting too is that it's it's not like it feels like they're seeking him out right they're not trying to spot dg and then rotate away or anything like that they aren't going on a ton of exploratory missions to intentionally push away from him they've just kind yeah. of done so by happenstance I, in some ways it, it feels like that but i think i think calm is doing a great job with the scouting that he's doing and as well as bustio with his turret or uh, yeah bustio with his turret he's constantly peeking a long right and they start to get information about where he's not and that's how they're able to choose in the direction it's not like they're spotting him and running away it's they're spotting where he's not again that late dart this completely indicates that they're going to flood on this seaside 
previously though there was a split through garage as the start was going down no intentions of that this time around there's the dart and it's combined with the drone does he have an ult yeah he does oh that's two pings no way and one kill and that is oh, one thousand percent just a come round khalil how is he still alive in the smoke mw team flashed him oh dear Oh my gosh, MW Khan stops him. Spike down, C. It really might be a calm only round at this point. And Digicent again, the last player involved in anything. He's got a shot at winning the round though. This time he's got a chance to make a play. And he did pop his knives too, so. Yeah. Don't think that just because he has that out, it's going to be tough for him. Khan is making a really interesting play. Did not recover the spike. Remember, he was ulting. He was not involved in that hit. That's why the spike is lost on C. He's just taking the scenic route, but as as he tried to circumvent the position of DG, he fails. DG's still holding his angle. All those steps for that. That's a good attempt from Khan, but that one was, I mean, <laughs> Khalil being up top there, Demon 1 dashing into him, cost so much. And it allows the players to get back site to get into logs. The smoke is well fading. Kham also peeked into that angle too. Yeah, I mean, he kind of knew that it was a possibility. Yeah. I think he, he, the x-ray went away, but you saw him scale up and clear right. towards safe. the back of site first before he went into try to fight that spawn angle. Four four as we venture into round nine. DG still with the op in hand. All rifles for EG. There we go. This feels like the first time. Yeah, they found DG early and Bustio's dropped. They're playing drone. And it, you remember how confident Bustio has been, how comfortable he's been in taking these early fights. That is actually his only second duel of the first engagements. And he's 2-0 in them, and that's why that off is good for him, but... Need to be able to convert now on these rounds. It's another one for DG. See, they're not avoiding him when they yeah. spot him either. There's another. You're right, maybe it is happenstance. This one, EG is all over the place though. Bustio dying early has caused them to. Calm was just, I think, going to try to fake with the drone towards A, cause pressure towards MW. But again, the setup was not even there, so they would just walk on to C site though, and they're giving themselves chances. Over and over, Fury is leaving one site to be taken, to be walked on. 30 seconds left. This is so tricky for EG because you want to clear everything. Yeah, you just saw Ethan go clear C long yeah, Exactly, but in clearing things, you run the risk of getting dropped. Either way, they managed to get the spike down, mitigate any risk, and now they find themselves in this 3v5. Ethan has ult. Demon has to find value. Oh, oh he's turned at just the wrong time, but the ult helps. The ult helps so much. They're dropping them all! One enemy remaining. It's just MW! And they've one way the spike already eat Giacomo? Oh, he's cooking. Uh-oh. MW, Wait. once again, heroics. Can he do it again? You can just drop down in garage. MW has to check everything so carefully. So hey, tediously, he's spots him. He's gotten it down to one. Half. Ethan on the fault line. On the oh. swing! And MW on the kill! I don't think there's going to be enough, enough time, time, though. though. That is all up to Jarg there. I mean, Ethan obviously converts with the stun, forcing him to get off eventually. Yeah. But Jargamo going up in that yeah. smoke? You saw MW couldn't get in there. He didn't know if he actually TP'd in. And he's jumping into a one way. He does get the kill, but I mean, he waited that entire smoke out. Whew. That was what? Uh, I think Digizen got two with the op yeah 5v3 yeah 5v3 they walked onto the sea site the idea was good from furia let them have the space we can come back and coalesce together but they were so spread so far aggression out from mw demon glad to wait they're forced down to pistols and DG is on the other side. As soon as he hurries that drone, you see him take a slight step back, tuck, and wait. There was a nice setup too from Azeen. He had just gotten into A-Link so that he can fault line to help. 
But I'm surprised he's not saying, given where DG's playing right now. That was the trap that had been set for so long ago. They're being very clean. Remember, Calm was yeah, actually not checking every single angle on Fracture, but right now they know they have the series in their hands. Got to check all the boxes. So unexpected, too. Feels like the dart and the flash were just was slightly just timed off. What was oh, I just no. saying? Every corner, every corner, all good. <laughs> and it's an eco, but it yeah. is yep. very, if very not costly. A good shot today, don't Thankfully, worry. that bank for EG is really getting up there at the end of this half. So, not going to be too concerned, but look at the amount of well, rebuys they need. Yeah, that's not great. Damien going to save his knives for the loss as well. Did you see again a glass cannon op here? It relies so much on finding the right place at the right time. Yeah. And it might be, again, this time, the right choice because he's going down sewers. Yeah, they're going to set him up off of Breach's util. Man, there's a molly in, though. Wait, he stays. He doesn't take the space short. Deep this flash out from MW is going to confirm at least one. And with that info, they're actually reclearing and pushing drill up into Cubby. This is something that's been missing since the set. They're re-clears. Calm with a deep shock, which should be landing around B. Trying to break the alarm bot, but the alarm bot's yeah. garage this round. We can yeah. see it. Set up with the turret instead. Khalil's in a great spot. I mean, he might single-handedly win this round. QCK needs to take contact for him, though. They're clearing him. Are they? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. Fortunate that they're there. Now the Rolling Thunder's going to push him back, and they're all stunned up. Tossed and turned around the hall. Ethan pushing forward. 30 seconds left, and he instantly gets dropped as MW and QCK hold the line once more. Is this the best? That's a great hold. Base off that mid-round push down C-Long. Kilo getting positioning. Yes, he didn't get the kill, but they were so focused on that. That ult. As well, allows them to get in there. And Fury, not ready to give this series up. Not ready to give Haven up. And I like the adjustment that they're making. Digison's able to rotate MW out. Once he gets the angle. And they're not pushing him super aggressively given how much util there is on the EG side and how much consideration there is to droning out spaces, to darting early, to using turrets to clear things. So in that round, the fact that they don't push up actually allows for a little bit of uncertainty in where his position is. Mm. No mind games being played. Yeah, you're right. Quick little timeout being called right before closing out the first half. And for good reason. Again, as we think about Haven, a 6-6 and a 7-5 feel like a night and day difference. And it is a very low econ round for me, G, even though this is going to be a full force. Yeah, there's just not a lot to go around. But there's so many ults. As this timeout ends... We've got a Hunchy's Fury. We've got a Lockdown. We've got a Breach Ult one point away. Now Blades too. Yeah. So they're perfectly happy to form a game plan around this. And I think that timeout is fully focused on these ideas. They're wrapped around C right now, but I'm Get looking at Bustio's position and he has the Lockdown. So, you know, maybe this initial plan might be C focused, but Bustio definitely is going to try to get value with the lockdown eventually. DG did as well as you see him try to get high ground, but Mzine swinging off of his own utility deals a considerable amount of damage. And this is what I was talking about. They tried to set up Calm to get a Hunter's Fury pick, but they're walking back towards short and look, Both Furia is, is ready for it as well. MW is down long, a little bit of an off angle. DG. And Khalil is waiting here, trying to hold on to sewers and getting early info about where this lockdown is going to come. I mean, DG's already rotated over as well. He started the round. See, he's already no A. Charges. This could be disaster. He still has flashes. He still has trailblazers. He's got everything. 
but EG are in a great spot to trade back. See the rolling thunder combined. Oh, the guy's with the stunned lower. And now the paranoia. He couldn't see a thing, man. He was done. He was so done, but Khalil hasn't really been yet. cleared. Trades of the ults too. Khalil not cleared though, like you said. And he's just gonna mop things up. Clears the lockdown, gets the kill. Now checks back site. EG's Let's two remaining members playing off site. The spam for boost deal is good. Can QCK win this out? No, he cannot. Patient out from EG. The final round of the half goes their way. We've got another 7 5. Switching sides. This time on the attack. And on a Haven that Fury has looked insanely strong on in the past. Take a look at it again, man. The spam for Bustio. Massive there. I thought Khalil was going to be in a position to essentially secure the round. And yeah, he got one kill. But that's all it was going to be. As you mentioned, a 7 5 half in favor of EG here at. The Riot Games Arena, it's a family affair, right? We've got Sue standing by with two of Com's biggest fans in the world. Sue, take it away. Thank you very much, Doug and Bala, standing here with Com's parents, Tracy, as well as Juan, uh, who are absolutely rooting for evil geniuses and just standing next to the two of you, I have to say, I am absorbing the nerves i can tell i can tell how much this means to you one uh, what's going through your head right now uh my stomach's turning my head's exploding i'm just in a nervous wreck right now <laughs> tracy when i had asked if you're feeling nervous you had mentioned of course but juan always takes it a little bit harder for you do you usually have to be the the strong one who supports one no, uh, anytime he's deep breaths, he's like, <sighs> and I'm, I just go to the other room. I can't handle you right now. And I just go to the other room. <laughs> it's amazing to see the both of you here at the Riot Games Arena supporting Calm like this. I know it must be difficult with scheduling and, and knowing that both of you are from Austin. Uh, what is it like to be able to make it out and support him in the flesh? Oh, it, it's amazing. We've been so, so excited to be here. And it's like, it's just so awesome to see him on the stage just because it's been his dream, you know, so. Absolutely a dream come true. And also to see the parents coming to support as well. It's absolutely amazing. And Juan, I noticed uh, from your Twitter bio that you're also a one trick raise main. <laughs> I am. Do you get the chance to play any games with Calm himself? Does, does he teach you anything? Uh, he doesn't play with me because I may embarrass him. So <laughs> that's why he doesn't play with me. So you're saying that he hasn't learned all of his all of his tricks and skills from you? Not yet. There's more to come. <laughs> Okay, last question before I let you go. Obviously, it would be amazing to be able to see your son get a win here. But overall, you know, what do you have to say for just as a parent who's able to watch your son flourish as an esports player? Um, what do you have to say about that? Uh, we're super proud of him, the way he's come up uh, with, you know, integrity and being a team player. Um, I think he's grown tremendously with NEG, and I, I feel like the team today has really been playing as a team, at, whereas before they may have not. So I'm super excited about the rest of the season. Amazing. Thank you very much, Juan and Tracy, for taking the time. Doug and Bala, back to you guys. Thank you so much, Sue. Yeah, it feels good to hear uh, an interview like that. You know, Ball, maybe Papa Com can teach you a thing or two on your race gameplay. I know it's, I need I know it. it's a lack of time. <laughs> <laughs> seven five half for EG. They hang on to a lead. It's a slight one. And last time we saw a seven five, Fury came out, they won the pistol, and then it I mean that lead was yeah. gone just like that. Yeah, we went to overtime on that ascent. We'll see if All they right. can hang on to it this time around. The thing I'm worried about though is again looking at history. Nine three. Which they ended up losing that map overall. And that's not a great start, EG. It's Ethan again. This guy has been a monster on this map. The series, really? The entire series. Got some really key moments. Furia not liking what they saw. C decide they want to go B. Did we even flash. see the B side on that first half? Nah, I don't think we did, actually. MW with the shock dart in his lap takes a considerable amount of damage. We'll see it with the flank. And it's a good one. They've already pinged out this push into A link too. They've got a cross on this. Demon one's coming from A. Uh, the one, uh, I think MW can be in a really big spot here. Yeah, to get two massive kills. And he still has gone unchecked. MW destroyed that round from one side. The rest of Fury cleaned up the rest. 
they were, I mean, they methodically tore apart that crossfire that I was thinking that EG had the perfect read. Again, they were pinging on the minimap. They knew that it was coming. Demon 1 was coming off from A. But they got destroyed there. Turret out. And just like you said, a 7-5 half on the first map led to a quick lead back in the favor of Furia. And it has been these late map scenarios that EG has struggled with so far in this year. Over and over, not able to convert leads that they have. Can they close? That's been the question for EG. They find themselves faced with it once again. Cover going out. Demon 1 going aggressive and MW's waiting. He's ready. MW gets two. Lucio cleans him up, but you've also got QCK close by, so they can't even really scoop up the weapon. They have to be so careful here, and you see DG still playing back in spawn. So Com finally gets a Bulldog, and he's going to rotate away. You would expect maybe to stick with his teammate, but instead trying to regroup and take the space back in spawn that Giacomo's been trying to hold from B. They're not quite sure if they pushed up, so it's an okay approach. The the introduction of doubt, the possibility of what's on the other side of a smoke late in these rounds when the spike's already been planted is, I mean, half the key to success. Because it gets so trepidatious for EG. They have to be careful about every single thing that they do. Time ends out being the deciding factor. You're forced into making mistakes. That's just difficult, man. My quiver is never full. And we're evened up, all tied up. Seven to seven apiece. And we've actually got a significant bonus attempt here from Fury. They've got three rifles. Must need ops to go back to the stinger, but we'll see. Either way, two rifles already. Such a strong look for them on the bonus. And they're all grouped up towards C. Only a turret watching the grass flank, and there's only two players here. It's Giacomo and Bustio. And Bustio left, man. He wants to go check garage. That paranoia is going to buy a lot of time, though. DG's the only one up. There's the flash follow up. Platt still hasn't been cleared. He's still back there. Yeah, Giacomo's still good for it. One, but now way too many numbers. Way too many numbers. Overwhelmed and dropped. That platform peppered with flashes over and over. But that aftershock too! Spike the Utah in the back of Sidus getting traded over and over! Dude, MW, I think he has like 70 kills right now. 24! That's, yeah, basically. That. Remember at the beginning of the series, I was saying MW so far in this split has not really been that one that we saw on Haven against Fnatic. Hasn't been that hero that the Brazilian team likes to call him. He was the chosen one for Brazil before this region found success. But Haven in his, is actually his playground. This guy on this map fits him so perfectly. And there, Digison actually is able to make space for his teammates to follow up on MW in particular. But you saw there was the paranoia coming through with the fault line on logs. And then there was also the follow up sky flash through logs and Mazin's flash on the plat. It's so difficult to hold. That's the strength of this triple flash comp. Is that execute right there? The layers only get worse when you think about Seekers, when you think about Rolling Thunders, right? Like, Yes. Compounding interest. What's happening to that drone on, on A there? Just dancing up and down behind Double Box. Just trying to get a cheeky pick at the cross rather than yeah. giving them the chance to avoid the look on the drone. Nice little tech, but... That bonus conversion is going to hurt EG right now, unless they can do something. They've got a possible quick flank on this B hit. And perhaps the death trap towards B. You can see the Killjoy utility set up in conjunction with Breach. Dixon's online now. So it's a me. scary thought. Yep. One enemy remaining. You mentioned in the previous round that it was an aggressive bonus. Yes. Right? Then if, but if they're able to convert it, they're going to be rolling in the dough for many, many rounds. Just the amount of rifles they invested in 8k on some of these players we might be seeing max if they convert this next round in this economy that's <laughs> crazy man what a start to the second half 
again, the threat of the triple flash. This time they're leaning back towards A. You've given, you've seen two looks now towards C, towards B, but never quite what this A execute looks like. And Bustio is here as the KJ. And it's a good choice Cover to go out. in this direction, Furia. Given what we know on the minimap, this Killjoy is actually able to lose a lot of space very early, but look how EG is playing it. They're playing it more of a trap play off the alarm bot and it's stunned. The flexing of the KJ util here from Busio is really nice. I really like how they stepped to grab aggressively to preserve the alarm bot as well, but Busio ultimately dies. Fury are getting the openings that they need to get through the site. Ethan has to hold the line again, but MW bests him. And now QCK cutting off the rotations, just leaving Demon 1 alone. He's got the op. He's gonna try to challenge the 1v1 on site. With the knife out, MW gets ahead of him. Another three kills for him. And that op didn't even fire a single bullet. Yeah, another three kills for him. He's almost at 30. He's going to end for sure. Over 30. You can't say that. Dog. No, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Stamp of approval. King of guarantees. <laughs> Ethan has his ult, but they don't have the money really to make anything out of it. No. And you're looking at Fury, who's gotten what? I think like three team aces at this point in the half. A flawless run so far. And they're getting close to starting to, I mean, absolutely roll with those ults. Trying to put Demon 1 in a position to make a play. But look at how far back UCK is playing, bro. They know. Oh. Nope. Shadows. Didn't seem to matter. How much space does he take off this rolling thunder, though? Yeah, there it is. Demon 1 going aggressive. It's just a threat. And it forces Fury to throw the brakes on this thing. A paranoia as well. Is he going to be able to push on this flank of any point? You're right. I mean, getting all this space is a massive threat. Four players for EG on this site, but none of the guns. That's a very good call. It's just this. Lucio's Marshall still down. gets one. one the hopes of EG oh, resting in the scope of Bustio, and he delivers with two. Placing swamp grenade. Zine trying to get back into this thing with one. Look at the players on the flank. Yeah. They're watching his position. There's no letting him out. 30 seconds left. Unlucky. <laughs> that always feels bad. Die to the turret. And two major thrifty rounds off the back of Bustio's heroics. And the one on Fracture with the 4K. As a sheriff, this there gets the first tag on a Khalil, and then Kit takes out MW, gets the assist on the other. Dropping out of heaven, by the way, recklessly. But here's the threat that's been looming over EG every single round. Four ults on board now. They're scattered across the map, but these are big ones. The rolling, the fault line, excuse me, not used. So we're trying to get Demon 1 up in the spot, but because I'm of that early flash, Shogma has to use a Paranoia. No longer in play here. Off your feet! They're faking this B site and going into a split here. They're pushing through C-Link and they've gotten the sight for it. it Com is way too far. He thought it was a B hit. He still gets one on MW. The hero gone. I believe he still hasn't gotten a kill since you said that, by the way. Spike gonna go down, lockdown. Whoa, ended. that lockdown From, is so far back. They're really yeah. concerned about a push up. Giacomo just cleared garage. That's a huge omen for info. Here, but they're playing post run. here and they've got a lockdown of their own. Yeah, but there's still enough space back site so they can take. Blades online, blades offline, just like that. They have to wait this out, but they can play it for long. They can play for post plants. Khalil's got hunting. Khalil's got hunting! Jogamo's timing, not great. Blinding. Ethan on the tap, the flash up for Mazine. He's gonna get it halfway, and it's stopped. QCK with three big ones. Fury again, another round. And EG miss with a massive misread in that situation. That lockdown so far back, you saw what they were thinking. Trying to deny it. The space close B, which they came through. Obviously, there's a massive threat of that. But Fury has the option to just back off there. So maybe not necessarily a misread, but 
you're kind of forcing the issue and forcing Furia to play a specific way, and you don't have counters to that direction. This is a brutal half. And you need to find a way to win in those situations, in those retakes, if you're EG. Timeout called by Evil Geniuses as you see Potter very animated, trying to get the team back online, trying to figure things out. Because it goes back, Ball, I, I can't help but go back to the conversation we were having earlier. EG get here. Yep. They get they get to the freaking one yard line yep. and they cannot put it away. I they mean, cannot close things out. I've seen that exact camera shot in a timeout with the lead falling yep. out of their hands. And hopefully the changes that we've seen in performance of EG will convert into taking those ideas that Potter's able to add back into the fold during that timeout and carry it forward. But Furia right now looking to recover from that loss against Loudon. I mean, it's been a completely different Furia than what we saw in Fracture. Even in some rounds on Ascent, this is very clean. And I think it's, I mean, look at MW at 28 kills. Still. Seven rounds played in this half. Six of them have gone in favor of Furia. Falling good from Ethan. Shots better from DG. Oh my gosh! What was that? Right. How? He's not done, man. He's not done. The crowd chance for an ace. Khalil just trying to save face and not give it over. Cover going out. I mean, just surrounded. Oh, he's gone right by them. Oh my goodness, he just team flashes. It's all a setup. It's all a setup for the blades. There it is. Demon one gets all five. No charges left. I mean, for that to come in that round out of the timeout. What a setup for him. Yo. Dude. Yo! Three knives out. He literally held left click. Again, this guy brought in in week two to substitute and then brought in as the full starting roster. He's a monster. Here. But how do they continue to foster off of that play? Right? Is that the spark? Is that... The catalyst for EG to be able to close this out. Right back. Ace into first death. That confidence. That's something you get from experiences to not end up overconfident. The duality of man right there. Fury of playing this one quietly. Reminded where the issues have lied so far, EG on this half in on the retakes. So you either have a plan to reapproach the retakes with the util that you have, or you have a plan to deny this plant. Recalling my bot. Fury are six I and oh in post plants. On this half. Such a key part of their success. Both fault lines used almost simultaneously. Three players here. Stay in sight. Is that flash gonna hit? Yeah, it is. It's off the dash. And you've got Khalil in a great spot once again to make a big play. Nobody can see a thing. He's still there. Spike he tucks around the spike a. just outside of reach. Last Smoke, the only standing. thing in between them. Khalil falls. So does QCK. And they called it. Remember, the round before that timeout, they lost because of a misread by placing the lockdown down. And since that timeout, they got the ace. Spike and this round, a 4v5 a. converted because they hold down the site One and read remaining. it correctly. This was a stack. Jogobo was here. Khan was here. Bustio was here. They were ready for it. That was Furious turn to go back to basics because I think early in that half, remember, they were really pushing that C side. They were pushing yeah. that B side, but it was never really committing at the beginning of the round. And here, it's twice now.
Animated words from Frost as we're just a couple of moments away from getting back into it. A late timeout as this feels maybe not to the same degree, but very similar in situation to what EG's thinking, right? We've gotten this far. This is so close. Cannot let this slip through your fingertips. And you're right, Ball. I wonder if they go back to some of that. Testing the water C, trying to bully things away there. Definitely could be an idea here for Azeen. But that moment right there, it's 11-10. Just makes me think of the gravity of the situation that Fury are in. When Frost is so animated, that's the GM of Fury. Their coach, their head coach has not been here with them so far in this league. Tired out. And now they have to face and come up with really good I calls in these everywhere. last couple of rounds of regulation in order to stay alive and not go down two losses in a row. Demon one's holding long, they just spotted the op. It was all off of Khalid. Oh, he took a ton of damage. That was a hit, yeah. Yeah. I was curious as to why he was standing over there, but they find the op and they start to rotate away. But look at Demon 1, he's ahead of it. He's already yeah. rotating A as well. We haven't seen the jet able to rotate and find two positions of value. And he's in this hit, but remember, the triple flash is so difficult as an op. Lands onto the Trailblazer, instantly overwhelmed. You can see him dashing around, looking for solace, looking for safety, and he finds none. If he was slightly faster there, he's maybe able to get a peek down A long, but here, there's three flashes running into him. You thought it was a Vandal, didn't you? Yeah, I did, just for a moment. <laughs> I did, just for a moment. And another plant, another round win. Furia, flawless at that. And it's now match point. Match point. What a way to come out of that, given the fact that yeah. their idea right there was spot the op from Seaside and rush towards A as fast as possible, and it works out. Remember, first half was 7-5. Remember, EG had a chance to put this game away. And now it's slipped. Two more chances for them to keep it in their grasp. DG with the attack side up. Which I don't think we've seen this entire half. Yeah, definitely a switch up. I wouldn't be surprised to see if he had a Vandal on the floor or something like that after the initial picks, but... Especially because I'm pretty sure he stayed alive in that round. It was a flawless, right? Yes. He picked that off with Demon 1's body. Demon 1 hits another pen. DG with 48 HP. And you might see him rotate around again. He's keeping that up. Right here. Yeah, no, he's definitely trying to get an entry. <sighs> He's proc the dash off the flash. They want to go. Just come right back. They've tested A. Now they've tested B. And it looks like they want to end C. Third time's a full charm. retake. Yeah. Already called from EG. They've called full retake. Calm one point away from having the Hunter's Fury, which could be the difference making here if he can get it online. Oh, these shocks. So he much damage. The shocks, yeah. Spike planted. They get the spike down. How can EG do this? Can they do this? Khalil Weak, MW playing up close. The flash in his face. He gets one. Tries to get the second. The spam from QCK is just remains. too good. Just Ethan. And that's not enough. Attackers Once again, win. EG just a step away. And they cannot convert as Fury take them down two to one. But it was a tough battle. For again, the heralds of Brazil in the America's League, we thought for a moment they could have best been the best team. Going down last week to the actual best team in Loud and now being challenged here against EG, who has been showing signs of some life in this league. Yes, the record might stand at one and three. And yes, they have a tough super week ahead of them. But you have to look at this game and think, what a difference. I think there are a couple of instances you can point to in the entire series where you saw massive adjustments from both squads. Right, again, remember Furia walked into this looking a little sluggish. Questions about whether or not there was a hangover after their loss to Loud. But they recollected, they cleaned things up. 
And on the side of EG, as you were just alluding to, Bala, this is an EG squad that has gone through roster changes and has gone through a lot of questions that have looked that have just looked really rough at times. And yep. for them to make the improvements that they've made in, ju in just a week, to look this good, to get this close, is yep. impressive, but it's just not enough. To it narrow down enough. some of the roles issues that we potentially were bringing up, to see Demon want to have a performance like that. This. This is, I mean, Sean is going to be swooning over that for yeah. years if he was talking about the Digizines on a set. What a series. What? There's so many amazing moments from these players. And MW, by the way, on your screen right now, popping off with the win. All of them, bro. Did end at 30 kills. And the 13-10 win. And again, the scoreline, too, for them. Same one that they toppled Leviathan with. Cheers for Furious. Once again, they, they survived the best that EG had to offer. Because, man, they took him the distance. They pushed him in every way. But they managed to navigate that and walk away with the win. I think as well, one, one thing we've seen with Furious, there's many different styles, right? We've seen the Viper Harbor from them. Yeah. We've seen every single player have insane possibilities of popping off. MW in this one was insane, 30 kills again. But you're also seeing a wealth of different compositional ideas that makes them a little scary. I think the one thing, though, is that map pool did end up being a, a detriment to them, and they don't have as deep as we might have thought, given what we saw in terms of innovation. Yeah, I think those are questions that are just going to have to be answered week over week. Stick around. We'll have the Verizon post-game interview and more from the desk right after this break.
Welcome back, everyone, to the BCT America. Standing here for the Verizon post match interview with Khalil after Furia take over and win in such a nail biting series two to one over evil geniuses. And it all started on Ascent. Khalil, everyone knows that Furia has an amazing Ascent, especially on that defensive side, as we saw against Leviathan. What was it about what we saw from the side of EG that made it such a competitive match? Então, Kalil, no, as, no Ascent vocês têm uma defesa geralmente muito boa, como a gente viu com o Leviathan. O que que Evil Genius fizeram para fazer esse ficar tão competitivo mesmo na no Ascent? É, eu acho que pelo, por mais pelo estilo de jogo deles, eles jogam um, um pouco diferente do que a gente vem acostumado nos treinos, eu, por mais que eles sejam um time NA também, eles jogam bem diferente, então é meio difícil de se adaptar ali durante o jogo, é mais isso. They usually play differently when we're training, so we kind of have to adapt with what they do here on stage, so that's basically it, you know, they usually play a little differently than what we're used to. Indeed, and I think we saw a lot of that adapting happening on that third and final map on Haven as well. We saw a lot of hero plays coming out from players like Demon1, especially when he hit that ace. How were you able to stop that momentum and dismantle their defensive half to take the win? Então, e no Raven a gente viu vocês se adaptando também nessa situação, né? E basicamente vimos o que o Demon One fez com o Ace lá. Como é que vocês se sentiram e como é que vocês acabaram é, se adaptando nesse nessa questão? Sim, eu acho que eles jogaram bem de TR, de, de ataque. Sim. A gente pecou muitos rounds nas defesas, a gente é muito bom na defesa e, e a gente poderia ter feito bem mais rounds. Uhum. É, e pra parar o momento, a gente meio que, tipo, por mais que ele tenha feito aquele ace, a gente se acalmou, botou a cabeça no lugar, vamos fazer as táticas certinhas pra gente ganhar isso. Yeah, basically, you know, like, to stop the momentum, we just had to kind of calm down. You know, as soon as we saw that happening, we got a little riled and uh, a little nervous. But, um, you know, we, we, we set our minds, we focused, we played the good tactics and ended up coming on top at the end. Amazing, amazing. And now, moving forward, you're going to be playing against Cloud9, who I think have impressed a lot of people headed into the season. They've taken down the likes of EG as well as 100 Thieves and only dropping uh, too loud. So what are your thoughts about going up against them? Então, vocês vão enfrentar agora a Cloud9. E eles têm ido muito, muito bem e perderam só para Loud, basicamente. Como é que você está se sentindo sobre essa próxima partida com a Cloud9 e o e, e que, que vocês estão planejando fazer? Então, eu quero muito jogar contra eles, por, porque eles vem desempenhando muito bem no campeonato, por mais que perderam para Loud. É, eu quero muito jogar contra eles porque eles têm individuais muito fortes também e vai ser legal o jogo. Tenho certeza que vai ser um confronto bom. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, we've been looking forward to playing against Cloud9 for a little while now. It's been a thing in our minds. You know, yeah, basically, let's go is our mindset right now and, and just going forward and we can't wait to do it. And we can't wait to watch. Thank you very much, Khalil, for taking the time for this interview. Just one thing, he's, yes. ask, he's asking if you can send a quick message. Absolutely, please go, Khalil, go ahead. Eu queria mandar um beijo pra, pra minha mãe, pro meu pai e também um beijo pra minha namorada. <laughs> Te amo, Paulo. Beijo, viu? Obrigado por apoiar. Isso aqui você tá vendo. I love to send, you know, a big hug to my mom, to my father, and especially to my girlfriend. And I love my girlfriend, so I hope, I hope you're liking what you're watching. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cleo. That was very, very sweet. Uh, for now, congratulations once again with this victory for you. Furia. Taking down EG 2 to 1 Dash. Back to you. Thank you so much, Smix. And that was just the cutest thing ever. And the cherry <laughs> on top to what was an incredible uh, series. What a treat of a series. Well, again, I'm sure for EG and the fans in the Evil Geniuses camp, that one's going to sting because what once felt unreachable, untouchable, was right within their grasp. And unfortunately, it slips by. But Furia get it done on the day, and they continue to retain their spot near the top of the standings. What a heartbreaking game for EG. They played such a good map. They took a, a map off of Furia. They had some great ideas. But at the end of the day, Furia was showing us why they are considered a top squad here in America. So even though I felt like they were having an off day, the coordination wasn't quite what we expect. They were a lot slower to adapt to a lot of EG's ideas. But every Every single one of their individuals was just having ridiculous moments to keep them in this match and bring back Haven. Exactly. Fury needed all of those key performances throughout this entire map to put EG away. EG, this was such a good day for them, actually. The grind in this game against the top team in the region. 
Normally, that's something only the top experience teams do. Go boat blow for blow with each other like this. This was an incredible day by EG, and that last like eco round kind of feel towards the A site where DG gets three, that one's gonna sit with them. I forgot that MW Zare came up with that clutch that we just watched, let alone all these other massive there were plays so that he was making. so many moments from MW Zara, in particular from the scene. It was eight rounds where a member of Furia got three or more kills individually across that map, and MW Zara was a huge part of that, a ridiculous individual performance on the sky. We've been waiting for the lock-in MW W Zara, like godlike performance that we expected from him to come out in America. So the series we had it. Hard to fault EG in a situation where a player on the opposing team is putting up 350 ACS. You you dropped the the stat on the multi kills as well. Only 20, 24 rounds were played on Haven. Eight of those rounds, a player on Fury. So one third of the rounds, a player on Fury got three kills or more. That is insane alone. And it didn't really feel like it was a strategy thing from EG. Yeah. It wasn't, it was just, that's how the cookies kind of crumbled. The, the Fury players were in these weird bait setups off of each other and it would be like one of them would fall and then the next one would just get a 3K and the round yeah. would flip on its head. And it just kept happening time and time again to EG. Yeah, for EG though, uh, this is one where I walk away and I feel a little bit stronger about them than I did coming in. We saw the moments versus crew where they were looking way better, where the coordination was a lot more on point, where the fundamentals slowly started to look like they were hitting the mark that we've expected for a while. But here they proved it against one of the strongest teams that we have here in the league, which puts maybe a brighter picture on the future. Oh, I like, I like the sound of that. Eyes towards that next DG matchup to see if uh, people are going to start actually predicting this team no. to win some series. Uh, Series. Demon One, though, has got to be recognized for the change that he has catalyzed within this roster. Not only do they as a whole look different now that he can fill the duelist role and open up Jagamo to move on to other things, his own flexibility and his own mechanical skill to come up with this of all things, Whoa. the ace on Jet. Yes, the last kill, a little bit set up for him, but oh, down C long there, that's just a thing of beauty. Those blade storms were unreal by him that game. He single-handedly won a couple of those rounds with those those alts. That was insane. That was yeah. actually insane by the C site. And this kid just came out of nowhere from these open tryouts. It is such a crazy story to me. And Mimi, I think it's important, right, for us to show moments like that. Uh, high skill moments, high skill cap, mechanical moments out of the EG players, if only to better contextualize. Furious win here because I also think there's a danger that a lot of people are going to say, ooh, they shouldn't have been pushed this hard by EG, considering the conversation around EG just a week or two ago, right? But that is maybe being disingenuous to the relative power level of EG in yes. this iteration, in this form. Yeah, I agree. I think EG is playing much to a level higher than what we expected. But in the same time, I still think that Furia's expectation, if they do want to reach to be one of the top teams, if they want to be that team that we have been talking about as being like someone who can test loud and can be the absolute top of the league, you'd expect them to have a more dominant win here. But we've proved throughout Americas that every team is close. Every team can take a map off another. It, the gap is not that big. I think what I've learned here in, in our Americas is just these teams having the opportunity to all boot camp and live here and scrim these top level opponents, you can't really predict how teams are gonna progress. And certain ones that we thought would be at the bottom of the rung actually quickly rose to the top. And things can change drastically right now. That's what I've learned actually. EG looked like a very different team today than what they did on week one. For individual players, it's such a good way to highlight yourself. Uh, when Demon One came in, it was Pumegalo, who's this guy? Never heard of him. He's some random dude, but he came up, he performed. It's so cool to see the highlight on all these folks. Getting a look at our standings now, approaching the midway point of Super Week. You see there, Furia picking up that win. They keep pace with Leviathan, still one game behind Loud. For Evil Geniuses, they will slip to one and three, but of course, all is not lost. Still plenty of room to run as we move towards that halfway point of the split. With that, let's take a look at what we got coming up tomorrow. Two more matches. We'll see Cloud9 versus NRG, a head-to-head -head matchup from North America, and then Sentinels will take to the stage up against MIBR. Quick thoughts there from the two of you? I won't be here tomorrow, so I need to get thoughts now. Oh, man, if Cloud9 beat NRG tomorrow, I think North America might melt down. <laughs> 
<laughs> we won't have any idea who to root for anymore. Yeah. Uh, there's true. a real chance that Cloud9 could upset there. NRG look weakened after getting upset by MIBR last week, and that C9 team keeps getting better. That's just the NA NA match I'm so excited for. I mean, it's like it's the story of the young blood, right? You got Demon One coming in for EG, you got Jake and Rooney coming in for Cloud9 and making big waves. So we'll see if those waves continue to be made tomorrow. That is going to do it for us. Uh, GB will be taking over for the next couple days, and I'll see you all on Tuesday as well. But until I see you next time, here's your Prime Gaming Post Day highlights. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other, all right? Peace out. So while there is uh, a lot of pressure on the matchup itself, you hope that crew's not feeling as much of it, indexing into that nothing-to-lose mentality. The expectation heavily in the 100 Thieves camp. This squad starting on their stronger side. There's a chance here for crew. <laughs> A double setup towards Hell, dropping down. Melzer, there was a flash to accompany it! No chance at Hell of that one going down. Bang, 26 health, got to do so much in the moment. Down to that one on one. Dodge to the side with a fragment, Nade needs to kill. Found, and he's done it! Is this gonna be spam there? Melzer, rattling off the shots. There's no answer in sight. Wider swing, has to take a wider fight. Down to the side, they are weak. Stella manages it away! Swing, a punish from Bang, potentially now flooding right down, Waterfall, straight into the sightline of Klaus. Down into Hell, all the way forward, every single... Oh, 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 that's monstrous, and that's what they need. He's in their hands. Angle watch, nobody can stick this spike with you. Molly just at their feet, but there is a bit more utility. Try and work through, double fight taken, bang. Try and relieve some of that pressure, spraying through, shot, lands, that's to the side, does not matter. And 100 Thieves in a dominant fashion for map number three, a well-earned series. The Super Week battles continue, and for Furia and Evil Geniuses, they're looking to kick it off with a bang. Very ambitious. It's a good word to put it. Bustio has slipped the net. He gets two big ones. Bustio can find some success, some magic. It's a great setup. Demon one close by. Bustio, the one two punch is good. Oh, oh there is. He's going to peek ahead of it. He gets ahead of the knife and he gets two. It's just a dare. Ethan swings outside of it. Khalil stunned. And he can't be kind of smoke quite yet, but the flick is disgusting. Succeed. There's a tap there. And I thought for a moment he wouldn't be able to hear it. Patrogamo's positioning. It's just flawless. It's beautiful. Buzz. Either way, they still haven't fully gotten out onto the site. Com getting the opener. 13 seconds left. They burn the clock down as Demon 1 gets up high and gets a second. Oh, Demon 1 with the third! Early into the round, DG decided he had to save. Now he's feeling all this pressure. They're trying to get the op out of his hands, but DG is... Oh. What? <laughs> what on earth? It's better from DG. Oh my gosh! Trailblazer are instantly overwhelmed. You can see him dashing around looking for solace, looking for safety, and he finds none. Once again, EG just a step away, and they cannot convert as Furia take them down two to one.